Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Darshan Mehta. Joining me on the show is Agam Vakil. Agam will speak about the FNOQs. I'll talk about the general trade setup. And, and it doesn't look that all that uh, uh, good at this point of time. The US markets were down in trade. Most of the Asian markets have managed to recover, but still uh, trading with with an absolutely you know for flat pass. But the ASX Nifty has is indicating a gap down of almost 35 points when we open. The ADR, the close for the ADRs was very very bad. Counters like Vedanta were down three and a half percent. Infosys, Dr. Eddy's, and HDFC Bank were down almost two percent in trade. Uh, all the all the sectors, in fact, all the soft stocks, in fact, ended with a negative bias. Wipro was down close to one percent in trade. Uh, how did uh, you know? Uh, the crude pan out in trade. Crude has managed to hold on for today's trade. Uh, WTI looks all set to go below the $62 barrel per mark, and Brent is just holding on to the $67 barrel per mark. Remember, on Friday, uh, crude ended down almost 2.3% in trade. Now, as far as base metals are concerned, uh, mixed closing by the base metals. Aluminium seems to be doing well. Aluminium closed higher 1.6% uh, on uh, Friday. Apart from it, uh, you know, the other base metals that did well was was uh, it was uh, lead, which was up almost half a percent. But selling seen in copper, zinc, as well as nickel. Even in China, if you're looking at it, uh, aluminium seems to be trading well. But uh, sell-off seen in zinc, which is down almost 1.2 percent, and copper is trading weak also. Uh, precious metals are trading flat in absolutely flat in today's trade, except for you know platinum, which is trading up uh, four tenths of a percent. Fund flows, FIs were net sellers in the market. They sold in 500 crores, but DI is heavy bias to the tune of almost 1300 crores in the cash market. Now, if you're looking at the sectors which managed to move, the Nifty Bank moved up half a percent. The mid caps and small caps did manage to rally and outperform the Nifty in trade. Uh, some of the other sectors in focus, metal saw weakness, auto saw a little bit of strength that came in, and the PSU banking index was still a little bit of strength that actually came in into itself. The Wix was absolutely flat in trade given the fact that the markets were rather stable. And as far as the Nifty is concerned, the Nifty ended up almost uh, six points. HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank managed to inch up. While Infosys, Larsen, and Bharti Airtel uh, seem to be so showing a little bit of weakness. But Agam, what are the FNOQs indicating? Well, Darshan, as you you already pointed out, we're looking at uh, flat queues, at least as far as uh, you know last Friday goes. And very little change in open interest for the Nifty futures. It's the same for the Nifty Bank futures as well. A little bit of unwinding coming along, as indicated by the drop in open interest. Uh, there's no change in the India Volatility Index either. We have seen a little bit of... Uh, a decline at around 14.75 and the same for the nifty put call ratio just an edge higher at around 1.44 in comparison to 1.42 what we've also seen is uh, a little more writing in comparison to everything in ten, the 10,300 put uh, we do have an, a stock which is into the FNO band now so jet airways moves in and we're watching out for two other stocks uh, which have seen fresh longs building in so Adani Enterprises is one of them the other one is Jubilant Foodworks uh, which is also seen as much as nearly 25% in open interest as the step uh, the stock moves up by as much as 4%. But uh, that's as far as you know your futures and options space goes. Now let's head over to Bloomberg's Paul Allen for the headlines for today. Japan's current account surplus widened in February from a month earlier, supported by returns on overseas investments and a surplus in trade. The current account surplus was $19.6 billion, fractionally below forecasts, and follows a surplus of $5.6 billion in January. Japan's current account has been in the black every month since June 2014, partly as a result of the weaker yen. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell says the outlook for inflation and jobs supports the plan for gradual rate hikes, while the lack of rising wage gains shows the labour market is still not tight. In his first speech since becoming chairman in February, Powell said policymakers are still aiming for 2% inflation and will maintain the current strategy of slow but consistent hikes. The United States says North Korea is willing to talk about nuclear weapons when President Trump meets Kim Jong-un. Sources in the administration tell us Washington has confirmed Kim is ready to discuss the issue following initial indications from Seoul. CNN reports the U.S. and North Korea have been holding secret direct talks to prepare for the summit, although a venue has yet to be announced. A new survey suggests that most Britons now support holding a vote on the final Brexit deal hammered out between London and Brussels. The YouGov poll for the pro-Remain group Best for Britain says the public should have the casting vote on whether to accept the agreement. Those in support of a vote exceed opponents by 8% and respondents also said they'd stay in the EU if given a second referendum. 
Global News, 24 hours a day, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. Well, I'm not sure that his uh, economic or national security advisors are going to be able to convince him uh, to change uh, tack on protectionism in China. If anything, some of them are economic nationalists and security hawks. I think that the discipline is going to eventually come from the markets. We've already seen how this rise of trade tension has led uh, to a significant market correction, 10% uh, from the peak in the last uh, month or so. And if this trade tension were to escalate, uh, you're going to have more of a correction. Already a trillion dollar of uh, national wealth in the equity market has been wiped out by statements and action on China. So at the end of the day, I think it's going to be more market discipline rather than his own advisor's discipline. It's going to force him to change tack. Shifting back to focus to local equity markets, hi, I'm Nikki, and the stock of the day is AIA Engineering, where the promoter has sold in 3.2% stake in the company for a sum of around 400-odd crore. Promoter Badresh Shah has offloaded exactly 3.2% stake in the company for 419.8 crore. Uh, the promoter has sold roughly around 30 lakh shares for a price of 1,400 per share, and in return, you've seen a DSP BlackRock Mutual Fund, which is bought in 0% stake 0.6% stake in the company uh, for 80 crore and has purchased overall 5 lakh close to 5 lakh 72,000 shares for a sum of around 1400 shares each if you look at the shareholding pattern you would see a consistent uh, performance coming in at least in terms of the promoter shareholding which has remained consistent for a year or two at around 62 odd percent uh, as per the December shareholding pattern and also if you look at the pattern which we've seen in the past two to three years also if you look at the public shareholding pattern that's almost 38 percent but then there have been a, a couple of uh, concerns right now raised for the company in terms of um, the company although it's a virtually debt-free company but then there are a few concerns that we're looking at in terms of the EBITDA margin compression uh, going forward if you look at the one-year chart of the EBITDA margin performance that has been deteriorating for the company on account of a raw material spike which is coming in also the company's uh, capex plans have been delayed by at least six months uh, due to vendor issues it is first planning to go ahead with its phase one capacity uh, of one lakh ton coming up in June uh, 2018 and you would have the second capacity coming in in June 2019. However, say, having said that, uh, still analysts uh, tracked by Bloomberg continue to uh, remain bullish uh, overall on the count. If you look at the buy rating, you have 10 analysts suggesting a buy rating on the stock, eight of them suggesting a hold and roughly around two analysts which are suggesting a sell right now. The potential upside as per the Bloomberg concern census view stands at a roughly 10% from the current market price. Shifting focus to currency and commodities market, talking about Indian rupee first, uh, it surrendered its initial gains on Friday and ended steady at uh, 64.97 levels against the dollar. Now for the week, the Indian rupee strengthened by a good 21 paise against the dollar after two straight weeks of decline. Also, country's foreign exchange reserves has hit a, a lifetime high of 424.4 billion dollar mark for the week and for the week ended 30th March. Well, speaking of the bond market, sovereign bonds posted their biggest weekly gain since November 2016 last week after central bank lowered its inflation forecast for financial year 2019. Also, yield on the benchmark 10-year bonds uh, dropped nearly 22 basis point uh, to 7.18% last week. Well, specifically on Friday, yields rose nearly 5 basis point. And in terms of flows into debt market, global funds increased their rupee debt holdings on Friday. For the third consecutive session, they infused close to 980 crores, according to NSDL data. Well, on the global front, dollar index fell versus most of its G10 peers uh, on the back of disappointing jobs data and the index ended four tenths of a percent lower on Friday. However, it is now trading marginally higher near 90.20 levels. And lastly, speaking of dollar rupee, now it is trading at 64.84 levels against the dollar in the non-deliverable forward market, which indicates a positive opening for Indian rupee in today's trade. Having said that, let's shift focus to commodity space. Good morning, Jayesh. What cues are you picking up from this market today? Morning, Saloni. So, you know, crude oil prices are actually in focus. Uh, if you look at the screen right now, both WTI and Brent are trading with a marginal uh, gain for themselves. Uh, however, on Friday, we did see that uh, WTI declined more than 2%. In fact, for the entire week, it uh, closed about 4.5% lower, which is the biggest weekly decline in over two months. 
Also that uh, hedge funds have reduced their net bullish positions uh, on Brent crude oil. So we'll have to wait and watch uh, what actually uh, pans out in the oil markets. Uh, but shifting focus to the base metal space, the index itself uh, closed largely flat. Um, now this is on the back of uh, trade war concerns that we got uh, between the US and China. Uh, though, you know, uh, there, uh, the, the trade war has, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, both US and China are very guarded on, uh, you know, the peace talks uh, between them. Uh, on the back of this, uh, most of the base metals declined except for aluminium, which closed about 1.6% higher. Now, uh, uh, you know, copper and copper, zinc and nickel uh, closed uh, lower and lead ended higher while we had uh, tin, which closed flat. Uh, so now, uh, you know, if you look at the Shanghai Futures Exchange, uh, we are getting mixed cues from uh, bo uh, from all the uh, base metals over there. As far as uh, the uh, the gold prices are concerned, we have seen that uh, gold actually surged more than six tenths of a percent on Friday amid the trade war concerns. Well, amongst the stocks that we are tracking in trade today includes Tata Chemicals, which will buy a company called Allied Silica for 123 crores. And this deal is expected to be uh, closed in a period of three months. Uh, the agreement also includes the acquisition of an existing manufacturing site at Tamil Nadu. And remember, this is a part of... Um, the board approval that came in uh, Feb 2017 with respect to investments to be made in the specialty business. We're also tracking another Tata Group company that is uh, Titan, uh, which has uh, shared its Q4 FI18 uh, quarter updates for the entire fiscal year. They said it was a satisfactory year with respect to overall business performance. Uh, most importantly, when it comes to the jewelry division for the quarter, they've said that the retail sales have grown in mid teens. So watch out for uh, those two names. We also have Inox Win, which has one. 100 megawatts in Seki 4 auction and uh, the bid was won at a fixed price of 2.51 per unit and this is for a period of 25 years and with this uh, the company's auction based order book has increased to 950 megawatts watch out for that name as well we're also tracking ITI limited which has received a cabinet approval to issue 18 crore fresh equity shares to the public and this will be to meet that 25 percent um, public shareholding requirement of SEBI, uh, also for working capital and to reduce debt. So that's another stock to watch. Sri Renuka is also on the list uh, where the board has said they will divest Brazilian operations in due course. We're also tracking SmartLink network uh, systems, which will buy back about 25% of its equity at the price of 120 per share, which is a uh, nearly 15% discount to Friday's closing price. We are also watching out for HDFC and this is on the back of an ET report which says that HDFC may consider buying a Polo Munich for nearly 1000 crores. And lastly what we are watching out for is Max India and that is again on the back of an ET report which says that Max India is in talks to buy its partner Life Healthcare's 47.5% stake in Max uh, Health which is the hospital chain. So, And that will be for an amount or consideration of anywhere between 450 to 540 million dollars so watch out for Max India as well. Well, Lemontry Hotels is uh, all set to list its initial public offer today. Now, the IPO could uh, sail through on its final day of subscription. Now, all thanks to the uh, institutional investors, which got subscribed nearly 3.4 times. However, the IPO got poor response from the h &I as well as retail category investors, as it was uh, subscribed a little over 10% each. Now, in terms of overall subscription, the IPO could manage uh, to garner nearly 1.2 times of its subscription. Now, uh, in terms of its business, in terms of valuation, so if the IPO could uh, manage to list at the issue price of 56 rupees, the market cap would be around 4,400 crore. Now, Looking at the possible listing scenarios, uh, dealers are predicting that this IPO is likely to list at a discount and say if it were to list at a 10% discount at 50 rupees, the market cap would be around 3,900 crore and if it were to list at a 10% premium, the market cap would be around three, uh, 4,900 crore. Now, given the market cap scenario, the enterprise value to EBITDA, that is their operating profit ratio, will vary in the range of 40 to 49 times, which is still higher as compared to its peers. Now, in terms of business, Lemonry Hotels is India's largest hotel chain in the mid-price segment, and the company directly owns some hotel, and they also operate some hotels uh, 
in terms of lease agreements now uh, as in terms of operations so lemetry hotels had 4700 4, rooms uh, 45 hotels across 28 cities in the country as of jan 2018 and uh, in terms of brands lemetry uh, hotel operates under three category that is the upper mid scale category called lemetry premier mid scale category called lemetry hotels and economy segment called red fox now as you can see your majority of their rooms uh, consist of their mid scale segment that is lemetry hotels now in terms of revenue composition uh, lemetry hotels owns nearly 20 out of 45 hotels and uh, majority of their uh, revenue comes from their own hotels that is it comes nearly 63.1% of their top line and the rest from owned uh, leased as well as managed hotels now remember higher share of owned hotels also signifies that it is a highly capital intensive business for lemetry now in terms of uh, bottom line as you can see here the company has managed to turn around their bottom line in the first 9 months of financial year 2018 after seeing losses for several years since if 13 now when you compare lemetry hotels with uh, its peers uh, lemetry hotels closest peer is uh, royal orchid uh, uh, this is of course in terms of your business profile we also have other hotel players uh, like indian hotels as well as eih but we have not taken them into consideration given a majority of their revenue comes from their premium segment while for lemetry majority of revenue comes from their mid scale segment now in terms of occupancy rate lemetry hotels has the highest occupancy rate as of fy 17 of nearly 76% as compared to industry average of 65% and it's not only the highest occupancy and see rate for lemetry hotels but they have also maintained their leadership position since fy15 now on the flip side if you uh, see their food and beverages revenue it is the lowest for uh, lemetry hotels which is nearly 21% now remember fnb segment for hotel industries is a high uh, margin business and it is way way less as Uh, as you compare it to its peers which is in the range of 30 to 45% and lastly in terms of valuations uh, in terms of ev to ebitda lemetry trades at 45 times its uh, fy17 operational profits as compared to the industry average of 15 to 30 times every thing in uh, democratic society periodic audit is always necessary to see whether we are progressing on the right lines or not no system created by human beings can be perfect This country experimented with a particular system of appointments till the second judge's case, what we call as popularly known in the legal circles as the second judge's case, that nine judge uh, bench judgment, where this collegium uh, system was introduced. Thereafter, it was a different ex experiment for the last about now 25 years. There are always problems. Question is, democracy we keep experimenting with it. Undoubtedly, the Chief Justice would have the authority to constitute the benches, but under a constitutional system, every power is coupled with certain responsibilities. The power is required to be exercised, not merely because the power exists, but for a public, for the purpose of achieving some public good. Let's now look at uh, some of the stocks that you should keep on your radar based on Friday's delivery buying and selling. The first stock that you need to uh, keep on your radar that would be Shriram Transport Finance. Uh, now that was up about three uh, percent in trade and saw delivery buying of more than 150 crores. Uh, the delivery volume nearly doubled at about 10 and a half lakh shares as compared to its five-day average, and the total volume shot up 80 percent at nearly 22 lakh shares as compared to its five-day average. The second stock to watch out for that would be Mind Tree. Now it was up about three point two percent. And saw delivery buying of more than uh, 70 crores. The delivery volume shot up 63 percent at about 9 lakh shares as compared to its five-day average, and the total volume also surged more than 60 percent at about 32 lakh shares as compared to its five-day average. Last and final stock to watch out for: Jubilant Foodworks. Now that was up about four uh, percent in trade and saw delivery buying of more than 50 crores. The delivery volume shot up 45 percent at nearly 2.2 lakh shares as compared to its five-day average, and the total volume more than doubled at about 20 20 lakh shares as compared to its 5 day average
On the big brokerage calls for the day, first we have is Deutsche Bank market research on Kotak Mahindra Bank. Now they have raised the rating on the stock to buy from hold and have hiked target price to 1,280 from 1,100. Now according to the brokerage growth momentum for Kotak Mahindra Bank is improving with its liability strategy paying off. Now the bank is now moving to a high loan growth phase where the brokerage is expecting the loan growth to be 20% plus. Now the bank is best placed to benefit from financialization of savings with growing customer base and diversified product portfolio. And the brokerage is expecting the bank's return on asset and return on equity to improve to 2.4% and 17% by financial year 2020. It also says that the subsidies of the bank such as the insurance, mutual fund and broking are at a critical stage and going forward profitability is expected to improve for them. Lastly, it says that the expansion valuations of the bank are justified on the back of growth returning to the bank. Second, we have is Macquarie on Jubilant Life Science. Now, the brokerage has maintained its outperform rating on the stock with the target price of 1096 which suggests a potential upside of 34%. Now according to the brokerage as the surge in the LSI space or the life science ingredient space decreases the specialty business will be back in focus for the company. So the brokerage is expecting Jubilant, Jubilant's pricing in the LSI segment to gradually taper down in the fourth quarter of financial year 2018 and in the first quarter of financial year 2019. Along with this the brokerage will also keep an eye on the green shoots and pricings for Jubilant's US generic business. Now, however it is expecting the Q fourth quarter of financial year 2018 to be solid for the company led by pickup and specialty business. Business. Lastly, it says that the valuations look attractive for Jubilant Life, which remains at their top mid-caps pick. Well, there's lots to talk about from geopolitical events to international markets and you'll find all that and more on Bloomberg Quint Live. But there are also several stories on the website that you should consider reading. That's BloombergQuint.com. First up, SBI General Insurance, a subsidiary of State Bank of India, expects to wipe out accumulated losses during the current fiscal and may go in for a listing next year. The Commerce and Industry Ministry has convened a meeting on the 11th of April to discuss issues pertaining to foreign direct investment in the tobacco sector. Industry body COAI expects earnings of mobile operators to remain depressed for another three to four quarters on account of the competition in the sector. And it was a rather productive weekend for the Indian athletes at the Commonwealth Games. India's medal tally now stands at 13, with the latest news that Pradeep Singh has won a silver medal in weightlifting in the men's 105kg category. Now with the IPL making a return this weekend, cricket is back 
front and centre. You've probably seen the likes of Virat Kohli and A.B. de Villiers score breathtaking centuries and I'm sure that you've wondered what makes the bats that they use so special. Some of those bats come from the factory of India's largest sports equipment manufacturer. Here's a look behind the scenes. That's all you need to know going into trade this Monday morning. Up next is Indian Open and it will take you through market open. Thanks so much for watching. This is Bloomberg Quid.